bring out that, that combination of not just what you saw, but also what you brought in here with you when you came in today. <laughs> they have to prove it every time they go into that gym, whether it's with shit that comes out of their mouth or wrapping their gloves with plastic shit on the inside or breaking each other's nose. Good. What's wrong with having that kind of power? So everything you just saw kind of fly across the screen for the last 80 minutes. And um, all of you have your own stories also when it comes to your relationship to sports um, and women's access to sports. And the sound that I remember is just kind of the release of the energy from the women as they're sparring. Their mouths going ch 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 and the first time I think about it, it's like tuk, 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 as I'm hitting the, what are those, the speed bags? Yeah. As the round was starting, there was a series of three, like, buzzer sounds as they were mm -hmm. coming out into the middle of the arena. That got me pumped up. Is how on the back of their shirts they had something like, be first, or it was something like that. And that's not something that's typically accepted for women in particular to say, I want to be first. And I like being able to hear somebody commentating about what they were feeling and thinking. And I'm seeing it, so I felt like I was in their head and in the moment. Lisa played a, a big role for me because I've been a coach. And how she was bringing all of her boxing experience or whatever training experience she had, and even just being at the tournaments, how she was so level-headed and calm for her athletes. The one whose sister-in-law died, and she didn't get to go. That this is where she's meant to be at this time, and um, being with her family, for her family, which is what she learned from. It seemed to me what she learned from being part of the team. I do powerlifting competitions, and even the first time I saw this, I thought, wow, there's so many similarities, and there's differences too because we're not facing someone one-on-one, -on -one, but we have the same weight cutting, we don't compete that often, you're hungry, you're tired, you're crabby, you know, you haven't been able to eat like a normal person for weeks on end, and sometimes you're just like, I just want to quit, you know, but then you're like, no, I'm doing this because this is something I really, really want. You know, it's an individual sport, but they really operated like a team, like a team would during a sport, and I participated in other individual sports where you really depended on that energy of the people around you who were not, you know, your success doesn't really depend on their success, but you really felt that energy with those women of supporting and being there in that same experience. Because I think athletes often question, why am I doing this? And it's nice to be able to turn to someone who's like, yeah, you're doing it because. The because is not about right. winning. Right, yeah, yeah. If, if playing sports was about mm -hmm. winning, very few people would play because there always has to be somebody <laughs> who doesn't win. Right. The win-loss column is, yeah. is one thing, but winning at something Mm -hmm. is a whole nother level. I mean, they mm -hmm. won because they finished the training. They won right. because they started the training. Right. I mean, yeah. It was in 1992, which isn't that long ago, but enough. Um, I was playing in the girls' state basketball tournament, and it was be the night before the first game, and our star post player got the flu, and she just couldn't play in that game, and I was in disbelief. I couldn't understand. I couldn't put myself in her shoes she couldn't play through it and I was trying to not be disappointed in her and trying to stay focused on my game and trying to keep the team you know cohesive and everybody still working towards the same goal but I I couldn't I couldn't be where she was at and she obviously couldn't be where I was at yeah I can't relate to um, throwing a punch or receiving a punch I just I just physically don't think I could do it and I think I would just have a really hard time throwing a punch at someone. And at the same time, I just have in, just immense respect for what they're doing. Every fighter is bringing all of their stuff into the ring at that moment. And some people might have the upper hand because they get more stuff. What message do you think this film says about women athletes? What was the very last line was, I don't see women boxers in the ring, I don't see men. I see, or women, I don't see men, I just see boxers. I thought it was a great demonstration of how raw it was that those were athletes. And it was interesting to read um, 
after the film, the bios on everybody and where they are at mm -hmm. now, and just the information about the Olympic, you know, boxing for women is just, it's not there. This is about the essence of what it is to be an athlete. Yeah. And the transformative nature of mm -hmm. athletics, too, to me. It was really yeah. not how, you know, athletics transform. They have transformative powers. And the difference is women have not always been given that. And right. even though we are of a generation that, um, you know, here I am finding out I'm really not pre-Title uh, IX, but <laughs> when I wanted to join the wrestling team, in high school in the late 70s, they just laughed at me. I wanted so desperately to play hockey mm -hmm. and football. <laughs> and I couldn't. Yeah. Well, not, not only because it wasn't there for me, but my parents didn't know how to mm -hmm. handle that. Well, once you're a certain age, you really shouldn't be doing those contact sports. There's still a lot of doors to be open. Yeah. You know, it's like you know the reality of what it is to be a woman athlete in your experience. And you look at this film and how does this film match up to images you see of women athletes in the rest of your life? I mean, you, you, we see them all the time on TV or in magazines or around us. Not having thought of boxing as an educated person's choice and then seeing all of their bios afterwards and going, wow, wow. I'm used to seeing women raw, mm -hmm. training hard, and um, but what I'm used to seeing in maybe print media is not this. It's a, a, a classier, glorified look, a more acceptable female role. It's interesting that even in the last, say, 10 years, there's been a change in how the media looks at what the ideal female body is, and it's become, at least in some subset of publications, a more muscular, um, defined look than just the skinny, you know, supermodel look, and I think that's really cool. Um, but at the same time, there's um, somewhat of a um, split that, yeah, you can look like this and be this muscular, you know, fit woman, but don't do anything too tough. And that's where the boxing is really interesting because it's one of those areas that even now is a little bit off limits for women. Because I think early on in the film, there was, I think Gina was on the um, floor of the ring mm -hmm. in her pigtails or her braids and they wanted, someone wanted to put, you know, photograph her in cute mm -hmm. shorts and cute pose and have her gloves on. and. Um, I turned to Shelly and I'm like, wow, that is really degrading. Yeah. But I don't know what the sh shoot is for. Either. Like, what are they? Are they selling? What, what they're selling? What they're and having a female back down on the ground while a guy's singing. It would be cute if we got a girl boxing. It would be a good shot if we got a girl, you know, with cute shorts on and cute hair, doing something cute with a boxing glove. You know, it was really. Um, it was kind of insulting. It was, it was like really not being taken seriously. 